Hi, I'm Lane Bailey with ProAxis Therapy, and today we're going to go over the shoulder exam. You want to start off by first holding and orienting the probe in the proper alignment so that you get consistent images and that your exam is consistent every time that you do it. You want to make sure that the, the dot that corresponds to the left side of the screen is always oriented superiorly and medially towards the patient. You also want to grip the probe at the distal end and at least have one or two fingers contacting the patient to ensure optimal contact and optimal surface area. We'll start off with the assessment of the biceps in the short axis by placing the probe at the superior margin or at the superior portion of the humeral diaphysis. In this position you can see the biceps groove and by sliding the probe superiorly and inferiorly, you try to optimize the depth of the groove to fully assess the short axis of the biceps tendon. Here you can see as we slide superiorly and inferiorly, the intraarticular portion of the biceps as it leaves the groove. Once we've completed our short axis examination, We'll flip the probe to assess the long axis of the biceps tendon so that we understand a three-dimensional image of what the, the biceps looks like. By sliding medially and laterally, we can appreciate the integrity of the tendon. Due to the proximity of the biceps to the subscapularis tendon, Next, we'll move medially towards the patient's midline and ask the patient to slowly externally rotate their arm. So go ahead and so here we can see the subscapularis tendon and long axis. And as we slide superiorly and inferiorly, we can scan the entirety of the tendon. Once we've completed our long axis examination, we'll change the probe's orientation to examine the short axis of the tendon, which is unique in comparison to the other rotator cuff tendons, as it has this unique honey, honeycomb-shaped appearance. It's important not to mistake this appearance with any type of defect or partial thickness tearing as the hyperechoic or bright intratendinous slips are enveloped by the muscle. So as we slide along the length of the tendon, we're carefully looking for any type of defect. Next, we'll move to the supraspinatus. In the proximity of the supraspinatus will be superiorly in relation to the subscapularis. To better expose this tendon, we'll ask the patient to assume a modified crass position or uh, simply stated uh, shoulder extension and a decent amount of external rotation. You palpate for the lateral edge of the acromion and you place the transducer within the long axis of the fibers just below the acromion. As we slide laterally, we can assess the distal attachment site of the supraspinatus tendon to the superior facet of the greater tuberosity. As with all structures, we want to get an appreciation for the three-dimensional characteristics of the tendon. So our next image is going to be a short axis examination of the supraspinatus tendon by orienting the probe 90 degrees from our previous examination position. It's best to, to try and capture the biceps tendon within this image so that you can assuredly uh, assess the anterior border of the supraspinatus as this, 
as this region is often incorporated in what we think are some anterior border tears. So by sliding up the length of the tendon, we assess and look for any type of defect. So as you can see on the left side of the screen, we are able to visualize the biceps tendon. Once we've completed our exam of the supraspinatus, we'll do a quick estimate of the acromial humeral distance by asking the patient to perform a resting position or assume a resting position while we palpate for the lateral anterior border of the acromion and place the superior margin of the transducer just anterior to that, to that region. Here on the screen you can see on the left side the acromion with a characteristic acoustic shadow behind it and then just deep to it on the right side of your screen you can see the superior margin of the humeral head. This image is significant as it signifies the rotator outlet, which is often decreased in severe rotator cuff disease. Once we've found our position for the acromiohumeral distance, then we'll do a subacromial impingement test by asking the patient to slowly abduct or elevate their shoulder laterally as we assess for pooling or bunching of tissues beneath the lateral edge of the acromion with elevation. As you can see, the supraspinatus is gliding beneath the acromion. We're not seeing any subacromial impingement. Next, we'll move to the posterior shoulder to examine the infraspinatus and the posterior shoulder joint. So the assessment of the infraspinatus is performed by placing the, the transducer right at the posterior joint margin, directly beneath or inferior to the scapular spine. From this position, we can see the infraspinatus tendon in long axis and follow it around to its attachment on the greater tuberosity. From this position, you can also appreciate the posterior joint margin and the humeral head as it articulates on the glenoid with the interposed glenoid labrum. Once we're satisfied with the long axis examination, we'll orient the probe superiorly. to appreciate the short axis view of the infraspinatus and the teres minor. And finally, I like to end the exam with an assessment of the posterior joint line dynamically as the patient slowly internally and externally rotates their upper arm. Here I think you get a good appreciation of the humeral head articulating within the glenohumeral joint and you also get a good assessment of just how dynamic that glenoid labrum is. This is also a good position to assess for posterior impingement as you would look for bunching or pooling in between the two joint surfaces. So once we finish this assessment, that completes our shoulder exam. Thank you for joining us.